so uh, like everyone, 15 minutes. Okay. Well, uh, welcome to the worst uh, presentation uh, of the day, because uh, I just filled in the, the request for the presentation in case we missed, uh, there was a gap. And at the beginning of the day, it seemed that we were plenty of, that there were plenty of presentations, so I just didn't do anything. Um, the idea was just to mention a few modules that we've been developing the, the last month, I would say. Uh, maybe some of them years. Uh, and I think it would be good just to comment uh, if some of them are interesting for more people if we should try to integrate them into Triton Core and things like that. So don't expect uh, nothing spectacular, okay? Um, the, the first thing I would like to start is uh, the production area. Uh, Cedric also already mentioned the root uh, module and their root and operation modules. I think they are, they are split into Two modules. Okay. So we've got our own versions of these modules, which ended up in the the ones into core. And I think some more features, uh, I'm not sure if they are integrated. But apart from operations, uh, there is uh, one or two more things that I think that are very important that and that should end up inside Triton. One of them is production subcontract module, uh, which uh, allows you to um, uh, real, uh, do the production in another company uh, instead of yours. Uh, this is something that more and more companies are production companies, but they do not do the work, or they do just part of the process. So what we... Uh, the current implementation allows you to uh, use the current uh, pr uh, workflow of Triton, which is, I don't know how many of you are uh, used to the Triton process of uh, planning productions, but you let Triton to create the productions for you based on um, uh, procurement rules. But then you can send that production to another warehouse and the system, the module, will automatically make the uh, shipments to move the uh, products back to your warehouse, okay? And uh, it's designed so that the supplier has a warehouse as if it, as if it were a warehouse of yours. So the, um, the products will be picked from their warehouse and you can uh, bring products as uh, uh, using the procurement process of uh, internal shipments that uh, Triton already provides to you. There's so it's the production of the company that you externalize and not, you are not doing production for someone else. Exactly. In fact, we've got uh, a customer who, ha who does productions for third parties too, and we've got some modules to manage the stocks of third parties, but that's another question. Mm. Another, another one is uh, production phantom. I don't know if you know uh, phantom builds of materials, which is basically that you want to split your whole production process or several production processes and you create the bill of materials of each of them but uh, at some point you want to create one single production for several bomb for several builds of materials okay let's suppose that you have to build a chair and you have three models of chair and um, the legs of the sh of the three chairs are built the same way, okay? But when you have an order to create a chair, you don't want to have a production for only the legs. 
Okay, you want to, when I have an order, I create the whole chair, but I want to split it into several bombs. This functionality is covered by production phantom. And at the time of production planning, it automatically picks up all the necessary sub, uh, sub uh, bombs, sub uh, build, uh, list of materials. Okay? Yeah? Uh, and how do, does the routing are managed with that? Because each bomb is its own routing, but if you put. We, we pick the, 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 the top level one. Routing? So you cannot define a routing on the phantom bomb um, and it should be injected sure if, or? If we, I'm not, I can't remember. I, I'm not sure if we define, or if we pick the first one or we recursively take into of them. I'm not really sure, I can't remember. You should check the code is near. We can check afterward. Uh, it, uh, though it currently it's not recursive. It just uh, picks, if you, one of the elements of the list of materials, it's a phantom, etc. it doesn't recurse. Mm. Well, we've got much more if you, anyone is interested in or has some needs in production, as you see. Here in Bitbucket, you can filter by production. Uh, we've got production split. I think it's not integrated or yes. it is, yes? You did not hear uh, this morning? <laughs> I was leaving probably. Uh, I didn't remember if we already integrated that one. Um, there's also an efficiency C percentage because uh, Triton Core is already ready for uh, easily extend this part. So you can define that uh, in, at the bill of materials level that in theory you require, I don't know, one liter of, uh, or one kilogram of uh, painting to create this product, but you know that only 95% is going to be efficient. You have a 5% wastage, so you can define this 5% and it will uh, prorate, it will calculate the necessary quantities. You know? No? <laughs> Instead of defining the quantity, you define the theoretical quantity and a percentage uh, next to it. And uh, some modules related with, uh, I had, I've got it. Uh, mm -mm -mm. I thought I had opened. There are also some modules for quality control and some of them are integrated with production and with lots. Okay. We've been working also lately, Angel especially, uh, in some improvements in the project area. And I think the most relevant part is the possibility of uh, invoicing based on what we call here certifications. I don't know in other countries, let's say that you work for the government and you have to build this room, for example, and they're going to pay you uh, while you are working on, on this uh, building, mm -hmm. okay? But you need to agree, both parts, on what has already been done. Because you can say, okay, you put the lights and they will, the customer will come and say, you put the light, but one is, is not working. So by now, I'm, not, I'm just going to pay you three of the four lights, for example. So uh, we, you create a kind of certification uh, document with which both parts agree and that creates the invoice okay and we also added uh, products uh, to um, products to be sold uh, to those projects so you can sell not only hours of work but also products uh, some security related features uh, I could try to, no, I'm not going to try to demonstrate this one because we would need data. If somebody's interested, we can take a look. Uh, we created an audit trail, an audit log uh, modules, which register, uh, the one registers has the, the history of logins and logouts, and the other one, uh, it uh, searches the database 
of, for all the things that a given user did in the system. Instead of logging every action, which would penalize uh, the performance for each operation, we, 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 we brought the, the, um, the effort of the system to the querying system. So we have got a wizard in which you say, okay, I want to know what this user did between this date and this date, and the system calculates what has been done. And if you've got uh, historize, you know the feature that allows you to know which fields have been changed and what exactly the user did, it will have, uh, it will tell you this user at that date changed that field, uh, et cetera, okay? It's not very performant because we on purpose decided not to put performance penalties at the time of uh, creating records and modifying records. Because uh, sometimes this is a security requirement of the company, but sometimes it's a requirement for uh, an auditing process of the company. So it's a feature that they won't use in their everyday. Uh, did you think about using just the login module of Python and send it to something like Sentry or whatever to not penalize the operation, but to a queue that will store it? We, we just query the database. It's, it's quite a simple uh, query, uh, simple but qu large query among all the tables and query that information. <laughs> There's a small password expiry module which allows you also to say uh, the minimum, the, mm, the number of characters and things like that of a password, which is quite annoying, but sometimes people require it. Uh, I think somebody has talked about holidays at some point. Uh, we've got this uh, holidays employee module, which uh, I think it's rather good, it basically it was copied from uh, another open source project and it allows you to manage holidays uh, by, and at some point you can decide that you don't, do not give holidays to an employee but you will pay money instead of giving them holidays. I, I think you should take a look at it because it's a feature that it's, it's not something that uh, people will purchase the ERP for you, but it's something that all companies need. Mm. Also, we've got, uh, the, the name is not very fortunate. Uh, there's a, this contract module and, and several derivatives, which allows you to define recurring fees and so uh, recurring invoices and it's quite flexible. It allows you to define natural periods, natural months, or creating an invoice from day 10 of each month until day nine of the next. And you can use months, weeks, uh, years, and you can also define that the date of the invoice is outside of the period being invoiced. Okay, so you can define both things. And we've got some modules which link this contract with, with the asset. The, the asset module, we talked about them uh, in the mailing list many months ago, I think. And it's something we could talk about. Uh,
So this is uh, a basic uh, asset um, module. And the idea with an asset is to be used, for example, for uh, a car, a vehicle that the company owns. We use this module also for companies that provide um, maintenance to third parties. For example, we've got a customer that uh, maintains uh, elevators. And so we used this uh, asset concept. Or we have got a customer who uh, has, who owns uh, several flats and they uh, uh, rent those flats. So we use this asset concept and it's linked to the contract. So you can uh, recurringly invoice those rents <coughs> to the, your customers, ensuring that you are not renting the flat twice to several people, while at the, at the same time uh, maintaining this asset concept, uh, which we are extending for maintenance operations also. So you can keep track of maintenance, and there are some modules to well, do that, this maintenance process with a full workflow of an employee, which is going to make the maintenance, and somebody who uh, reviews the maintenance that's been done, et cetera, et cetera. And it's a, a concept that we are finding that many people or many companies use, and it's quite, um, it matches many, many requirements. We've got some modules which allow you to say who owns this asset, for example, in the case of an elevator, if you do maintenance works for third parties, okay, you can have all their assets in the system and say who owns this asset, even uh, if it changes uh, uh, next year, the, 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 the owner could change while maintaining the same asset. And there are lots of modules, but I just wanted to mention this few. Question. Do you still actively work with Bobby? Uh, well, yes, we use it. Uh, we are not extending lots of features, but yes. Is this something which could be uh, in core? <laughs> Triton leader? I, this, this question rings a bell to me. <laughs> Difficult to say. Uh, there are things to improve probably for getting to core. Does it make it yeah. easier for you to answer? <laughs> probably. Uh, I think Triton is designed mainly to be transactional, a transactional system, and reporting it yeah, doesn't fit easily. I think. But. Uh, basically, the the problem is that if you want to be a competitive business intelligence solution, uh, you need a lot of work to do. But uh, our experience is that it solves m many uses. So it's not the best solution, but it works uh, for many needs. So that's how we sell it and how we explain it. It's baby. It's a baby but it works for most of them. It's basic, yeah. Um, recently, we were, we were looking at cubes. I don't know if you know this solution. Uh, it also has its limitations, uh, especially, for example, in the interface. One of the problems with Triton is that the interface is, if you want to use the interface or the features that the interface of Triton provides to you, it's a bit limited. But you go to cubes, and it's not very powerful either. So, and the, and the compromise with performance is always very hard to achieve, because you've got one of the limitations in Triton is the amount, if you need to show lots of records, it's going to be slow on three views. But cubes, for example, limits the number of rows to 5,000. Usually, you can change the uh, parameters. So uh, I think it, it really depends on which scale do you want to work. So it's difficult.
Uh, I know in uh, ZigZag there was uh, there's some people somewhere, but uh, there you have the module SIL POS, the the POS module. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, what is the latest uh, status of POS in Triton? Mm, is it for me? <laughs> uh, well, we use that module for a customer, I think, only one. But it's a special POS in that case because they sell with without taxes included. I think Cedric integrated taxes included presently in one or two versions, 3.8 or? Not on the sale. It's just no, the prices. No other prices. Okay. But uh, about the POS, I plan to sprint <laughs> on it this week. I have a work in progress. There is a code of view, and, but it's a separate object and the sale. This is own workflow. I think I've sent an email one year ago <laughs> about it. So. <coughs> More questions? No? I think it's time for the foundation meeting. No, no. No? <laughs>